Six o'clock on the east, uh, the west coast. Nine o'clock on the east coast. Two p.m. in London, and in Malaysia, it's nineteen eighty-two. But that's okay, because all the great club music came out in the early eighties. So we're cool. Look, I'm not doing Michael Jackson. Okay, there's a reason I have white gloves on. And I'll tell you about that coming up in a minute. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Jay Sheldon, and I'm not wearing pants. And we are hanging out. Good to see you. Wherever you may be, we are live on Facebook Live. Uh, I'm not wearing pants. Jay Sheldon's YouTube channel. I know we've got at least one person over there watching in. Thank you. And also, of course, twitch.tv slash Jay Sheldon, no pants. Like, subscribe, comment, share. If you're on Facebook, the algorithms love it when you like and share it. Sharing it is important, so please do that if you are on Facebook. Thank you. And if you are so inclined, no obligation, there's a link right there on twitch.tv or up there in the description on Facebook Live. You click that, you select the amount you would like to donate, and you hit donate or send or whatever the hell it is. And that will send me a little financial stimulation. So thank you for that. Coffee time. We, uh, we shot a new episode of Urban Jungle Food, by the way, just today, this afternoon. Uh, and uh, it came out really, I think it's going to come out really good. Uh, the shots were great. So we are making, <laughs> we, we have a burger here in Malaysia. I don't know if it's in other parts of Southeast Asia, but it's called a Romley burger. Cheap, crap, roadside stall, and everybody eats it. So what we did was, because it's very urban jungle food, a lot of the stuff we do is healthy, good for you. We decided to go a little off type this time and pick something that wasn't all that healthy, but it tastes great. And it is a very urban, urban jungle food. And that's the Romney burger. But we used it in a very different way. You'll have to watch out next week on Urban Jungle Food on Facebook and see what that's all about. Um, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not doing Michael Jackson. I have two, but I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, also, th this day has been amazing weather-wise. Still now, just now outside, the wind is incredible. And normally when you get a heavy wind coming in, you'll see the dark clouds come in as the weather systems change and you get the heavy-duty rain. There's perfectly clear skies, crystal clear. The moon is bright. Everything is clear. And um, hello, Chaotic Robot. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, it's, it's crystal clear out. There isn't hardly a cloud in the sky. You can see the stars and the moon. And yet the wind, ever since this afternoon, has been unbelievably heavy. Heavy-duty wind gusts blowing through. My wind chimes are going crazy. Um, it feels great. It's cooling off. It, it almost, my other half said, I, th I think that might be right. It's spring coming in. What a nice way to think about it. Spring is coming in with a nice, cool, I wouldn't even say breeze. It's a wind. So, yeah, very odd. You know, I, I had some problems when I signed into my uh, connection tonight. And I just want to make sure that I really am live everywhere I'm supposed to be live. Because tonight, you don't want to miss it. This is a cool show tonight. And the reason I say that is part of the reason I'm wearing gloves and the other reason is that it is the finale of the wonderful Wizard of Oz. It's one or two chapters. Either way, we're finishing it off tonight. The wonderful Wizard of Oz will come to a conclusion tonight. Can't wait. Yes, Hokuzai. That's the reason for the gloves. And yes, Chaotic Robot, it is time. <laughs> Time for the finale of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. We'll have that coming up in the last half of the show. Meantime, the reason I have not been changing cameras, which I normally do, I've got a two-camera set up here, is because I have the other one set up as kind of a document cam. 
I promised you last stream, we were talking, we somehow got into Japan and my antique collection of all things Japanese, old, old school Japanese. And um, two, two things, they're both along the same lines, they're both books, but um, they are incredibly old books. As a matter of fact, uh, while I'm getting to this, I, I can't do this off the top of my head, I suck at math. Can someone tell me how long ago 1746 was? I think it's about 272 or three years. Just stick it in the chat over, over there. Um, just 1746 to 2021. If you could figure that out for me, let me know how many years and stick it in the chat. Thank you. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so yes, indeed, I brought uh, from my safe, secure, dustproof environment uh, two of my woodblock, well, one is handwritten, uh, 245 years, thank you. I knew I could count on you, Chaotic Robot, thanks. 245, okay. So one is handwritten, and the other is a woodblock print book. If you don't know woodblock, the, the artist, for example, the hokusai you see in the thumbnail from the last show and this one when the thumbnail goes up, uh, The Great Wave is one of hokusai's most famous paintings, uh, woodblock prints. And <clears throat> they would take, and the woodblock artist is different from the original artist, he would take and hand carve into different blocks of wood the artist's painting. So he had to be as good, if not better, of an artist, because in fact, if I'm not mistaken, it's in reverse. And each layer of color requires another woodblock carving. So you put the paper down, you put the ink, you press it in, pick it up, new block, new layer, new color. It's a very long process, takes forever. So you can imagine, and this is one book at a time. You can imagine how long it took. Um, anyway, I, uh, I did bring both my Hokusai manga and my 245 year old handwritten uh, Japanese poetry book. And that's what this is. Um, yeah, let me just kind of move it around there. And by the way, I know you can see my legs, so there's the proof I'm not wearing pants. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the, the front of the book, and actually, technically, books in Japanese go this way. So this is the front of the book. You can tell how old it is. It's got actually has some worm holes in it where the worms have eaten. Uh, there was a title here that has since faded. Again, uh, you're on time, Toby. Hello there. Thanks. Welcome. Um, there, was, there was a title written here. It has since faded. I don't know if you can see the binding. Again, this book is 245 years old. Let me see if I can get it to focus in. I know the lighting's not great. There you go. It's bound with a string that's woven through the book. And again, like I said, there was a title down here. And this is handwritten. I, you know what? Somewhere around I have the name of the author. I don't have it with me at the moment. <laughs> so forgive me. Unless someone there can read Japanese, I assume likely this is his name on this side. And there is a stamp here. I'm sorry about the lighting. Um, again, there's, there's, there's also right down here is one of those signature stamps that they use. Uh, again, I have no idea what any of this says. Um, I don't read Japanese. I really should have learned. But the whole book is filled page after page with this very famous Japanese poet's poetry. It all 
again, to people who don't read Japanese, and I assume being 245 years old, this was made in, in 1746. Um, it, just looking at the, the calligraphy and the, uh, the writing itself, it has a beauty of its own. Uh, it's just absolutely fascinating. There is, ah, aha, I found it. That's where it is. Hanchu Zuko Genshi is the name of the poem. And it is written by Kikuoka Senryo. Kikuoka Senryo, 1746. Kikuoka was a poet, of course. And uh, you, can, you can just take a look. Let me move this over. You see, there's actually little little places here where he's he's I don't know it's if it wrote a mistake or what it was, but it's it's just fascinating to look at this stuff, unbelievable, and to think it was done by hand by this quite famous Japanese poet two hundred almost three hundred years ago. It's absolutely amazing, incredible. So that's treat number one. Let me make sure that I put this note back inside. <laughs> that way, the next time I need it, and I don't remember where it is, suddenly it will just appear. <laughs> All right, let me put this. I have to be so careful with this because it is so fragile. All right. Now, this next book <laughs> is in even worse shape. Um, time to go learn, learn Japanese. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, this next book is in even worse shape, but this is my prized possession. If you know Hokusai, and you know him from a painting of red Mount Fuji, uh, woodblock prints, uh, The Great Wave, it's like 39 views of Mount Fuji or 54 views of Mount Fuji. There's a couple different series. Hokusai, one of the more famous uh, Japanese artists. Um, an incredible guy. There's a couple of, there's one really well done animated film about his life. Um, sadly, he got, um, he got, uh, he had a house fire and lost a lot of his original paintings in the house fire. Um, yeah, I remember use Hokusai as an art inspiration. You could do a lot worse than using Hokusai as an inspiration for your art. Uh, he is an incredible artist. Um, this book, let me just give you a little preview here. Again, it's in even worse shape than the last one. Um, there's no cover. That's long since gone. There are some wormholes where, where it's been eaten. Um, uh, I actually bought this from a supplier in Japan. Um, they have all kinds of antiques, uh, and, uh, what do you call something that's not quite old enough to be an antique, but it's not new, you know, it maybe came from the thirties or forties or fifties. It's, um, it, that era stuff. Uh, but, but a, a lot of the stuff that I've got, not just books, uh, teacups, uh, Japanese tea ceremony sets and things. They were all um, yeah, vintage. That's the word, vintage. Uh, they were all antique, uh, meaning over 100 years old, plus plus. Um, but anyway, so a supplier in Japan, um, and they are a very reputable uh, dealer. And I, I connected up with them and managed to, uh, to get some incredible deals. It wasn't cheap but it's so worth it. To me, it's, it's invaluable. There, you can't put a value on it. All right, so let me, let's take a look at, uh, this is a Hokusai manga. And we know manga, of course, as something entirely different these days. But back in the day, manga was simply a name for a collection of an artist's work. 
and this is uh, Hokuzai, one of Hokuzai's manga. It's from volume four. Obviously, I don't have the whole set. <laughs> uh, that would have cost me two arms and two legs. Um, yes, there was. It, it focused on uh, Hokuzai's daughter. You're exactly right. That's the Hokuzai animation. And you really should watch it if you want a great history lesson and a fascinating story, the story of Hokuzai's life. Um, this is one of his original uh, mangas, which is just simply a collection. I have to be so careful with this. Look, you see that there's a hole in that page already. Um, all of these are just a collection of drawings that Hokuzai has done, uh, the originals. And, you know, here we've got cranes, all different styles, different types. As you go through this, this was before he did the uh, views of Mount Fuji, which included the Great Wave, for which he is probably most famous. Because I have these gloves on, I sometimes I gotta take it like multiple pages at a time. There's plants, all kinds of uh, drawings of plants in here. Uh, in some, ah, uh, look at this. It's beautiful with the. I don't know if you can see that with the lighting. But there's a moon up here with the with the tree showing through. Uh, just fascinating stuff. I'm sorry if this is boring you, but to me it's absolutely amazing. Um, if, if you take a look at this, this is actually s snow on trees, pine trees and snow and things. But you almost see the beginning of the idea and the flow, the style of the great wave starting to appear here. You're right. Yes, indeed, Toby. It is absolutely beautiful. Again, I can't grab one page at a time because these bloody gloves. But um, let me see. Ah, here's another one. This one has a... a yeah, you can kind of see on the camera the big outline of the moon and the branches coming down. There you go. That's a little better angle. Um, over here... Again, another tree branches. All of these just different random drawings that they've put into a, a collection. Sorry that I'm getting in the way, but I've got to be very careful with this. See if I can get another page open. Um, <laughs> some more. Now, some, look at this. This is great. I mean, it's kind of sad, but it's kind of cool. Somebody cut out some of the drawings in this book. You can see this is, there's a, a rabbit here. I don't know what that is. A snake, some mice, a cat. But I don't know. I, you know, I just, in my mind, I'm imagining some maybe Japanese schoolgirl who's doing a project and she cuts out the, the parts that she needs for something she's doing. Now you see here, there's a tiger. Uh, this very reminiscent, again, of one of Hokusai's very famous paintings of the dragon coming out of Mount Fuji. <clears throat> I have a, a scroll, which is an original woodblock of that particular painting. Some more landscapes. Uh, again, you can see the style, and you can see what, what kind of becomes his later style when he was doing things like uh, the Great Wave little villages, houses. It just goes on and on. You could just sit and stare at this stuff for hours. Looks like a bonsai. Little hut there. Oh, wait, you can't really see it. Let me get it down. There we go. I hope I'm not boring you. I'm fascinated by this stuff. <laughs> All right. And let's see if we can't get into that last page there we go check this out this is beautiful look at that Let's get that lined up a little better for you there some landscapes temple another temple on the mountain here and then over this beautiful tree landscape incredible and that my friends is a hokuzai there's the boats I don't know again how clear that is, but let me take a look at it there. 
Lovely. All right, let me bring back in the poetry book and let me switch cams and get back to the ugly man on camera. I need to take these off because my hands are sweating like crazy. <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you because I'm, it's just, it's fascinating to me. Old time Japan. Back, literally, this was in the Meiji, Edo, Edo Meiji period uh, of Japan. And, um, it was uh, this, and in fact, that uh, poetry book is actually from the Edo period, uh, 1746. Um, yeah, it's amazing, amazing. So I'm glad I got to share that with you tonight. Forgive me for, in, or thank you for indulging me and forgive me for if I bored you. I hope not. Oh, goodness. All right, we got, uh, oh, Miss Looney, hello. Glad you, uh, glad you were able to make it in to uh, to the show now i have to figure out how to get this camera back to where it normally is and i think i'm just gonna have to break the fourth wall not that i don't do that all the time and <laughs> just kind of do it live so how's that working out for you oh uh, let's see okay we'll put this up over here i have it in about kind of the same position and what does that say yeah it's not too bad I just kind of maybe it's fine. We'll just leave it like that. I'll reline it up later. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Looney. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Wherever you may be, Facebook Live. I'm not wearing pants. Um, Jay Sheldon's YouTube channel and or twitch.tv slash Jay Sheldon no pants. Um, we thank you. It's good to have you along for the ride. There wasn't a whole lot else I really had to talk about tonight, uh, except the weather, and, you know, that's boring. And then my amazing two Japanese books. I've got many uh, other ones. I've got a whole series of uh, original, uh, they're about 200 years old, um, books on the uh, on samurai, and sp specifically uh, the katana, the samurai sword. Um, books and shows designs and all different styles. And uh, those are quite fascinating too. But again, there's only so much boring old books I can do on a stream before people go and, you know, let's go find a game someone's playing and watch that instead. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a number of these kind of books and I, I promise I won't bore you with them every, every time, but occasionally I'll bring one on and share it with you. Um, cool. So guess what? It's time. Hang on. I got to change cams. There we go. It's time to go. I should have practiced this over the rainbow. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to put that on camera. Normally it's in my background. Normally it's sitting on that desk. Uh, let's see over there behind me. The mic's in the way. Usually I have it stuck over there on that desk. But uh, tonight, I was going to bring it on. Sadly, you can't really see it. So unless I switch to, to this camera and then, then I have to hold it up in the air. So that doesn't work very well, does it? I know. Let's see if it'll fit on my coffee cup. It does. <laughs> it fits on my coffee cup. All right, cool. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll last until I hit the table one time and then it will fall either into the coffee or fall on the floor and smash. But that's fine. Okay. At least I can cut away to the camera and we have a rainbow because we are going somewhere over the rainbow. So um, this, uh, this book, as we always say, is... Uh, available on Project Gutenberg, which is... Uh, which is very easy to find. It's gutenberg.org. All public domain books, a lot of very famous classics are there. You can download them in different ebook formats, read them on your own. I uh, get my books from there and uh, we read a chapter or two uh, each time we stream, which is, by the way, three days a week. You will find us regularly on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, which means that the line, the go from Saturday night till Tuesday, it feels like forever. 
I'm thinking I should add another day in there, but nah, anyway, we'll, we'll figure it out. Anyway, so we are going to go into our final section, our last bits of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, written by L. Frank Baum. This, we've, as we've learned, is very different from the film uh, that we all know and love with Judy Garland and the gang. Um, but that's okay, because it's been kind of a different adventure. Coming up, beginning on Saturday night, I will be starting a brand new book, which is Alice in Wonderland. So that'll be coming up starting Saturday night. But for now, we're moving on to The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. This is Chapter 23. Glinda the Good Witch grants Dorothy's wish. Before they went to see Glinda, however, they were taken to a room of the castle where Dorothy washed her face and combed her hair and the lion shook the dust out of his mane and the scarecrow patted himself into his best shape and the woodman polished his tin and oiled his joints. And when they were all quite presentable, they followed the soldier girl into a big room where the witch Glinda sat upon a throne of rubies. She was both beautiful and young to their eyes. Her hair was a rich red in color and fell in flowing ringlets over her shoulders. Her dress was pure white, but her eyes were blue, and they looked kindly upon the little girl. And what can I do for you, my child? she asked. Dorothy told the witch all her story, how the cyclone had brought her to the land of Oz, how she had found her companions, and of the wonderful adventures they had met with. Oh, my greatest wish now, she added, is to get back to Kansas, for Aunt Em will surely think something dreadful has happened to me, and that will make her put on mourning, and unless the crops are better this year than they were last year, I'm sure Uncle Henry cannot afford it. Glinda leaned forward and kissed the sweet upturned face of the loving little girl. Bless your dear heart, she said. I am sure I can tell you of a way to get you back to Kansas. Then she added, but if I do, you must give me the golden cap. Willingly, exclaimed Dorothy. Indeed, it is of no use to me now, and when you have it, you can command the winged monkeys three times. And I think I shall need their service just those three times, answered Glinda, smiling. Dorothy then gave her the golden cap, and the witch said to the scarecrow, What will you do when Dorothy has left us? Oh, I will return to the Emerald City, he replied, for Oz has made me its ruler, and the people like me. The only thing that worries me is how to cross the hill of the Hammerheads. By means of the golden cap, I shall command the winged monkeys to carry you to the gates of the Emerald City, said Glinda, for it would be a shame to deprive the people of so wonderful a ruler. Am I really wonderful? asked the scarecrow. Oh, you are unusual, replied Glinda. Turning to the tin woodman, she asked, What will become of you when Dorothy leaves this country? He leaned on his axe and thought a moment. Then he said, The Winkies were very kind to me and wanted me to rule over them after the wicked witch died. I am fond of the Winkies, and if you could get back again to the country of the West, I would like nothing better than to rule over them forever. My second command to the winged monkeys, said Glinda, will be that they carry you safely to the land of the Winkies. Your brain may not be so large to look at as those of the Scarecrow, but you are really brighter than he is, when you are well polished, and I am sure you will rule the Winkies wisely and well. 
And then the witch looked at the big shaggy lion, and she asked, When Dorothy has returned to her own home, what will become of you? Over the hill of the hammerheads, he answered, lies a grand old forest, and all the beasts that live there have made me their king. If I could only get back to this forest, I would pass my life very happily there. Well, my third command to the winged monkeys, said Glinda, shall be to carry you to your forest. Then, having used up the powers of the golden cap, I shall give it to the king of the monkeys, that he and his band may thereafter be free forevermore. Well, the scarecrow and the tin woodman and the lion now thanked the good witch earnestly for her kindness, and Dorothy exclaimed, You are certainly as good as you are beautiful. But you have not yet told me how to get back to Kansas. Your silver shoes will carry you over the desert, replied Glinda. If you had known their power, you could have gone back to your Aunt Em the very first day you came to this country. But then I should not have had my wonderful brains, cried the scarecrow. I might have passed my whole life in the farmer's cornfield. And I would not have had my lovely heart, said the tin woodman. I might have stood and rusted in the forest till the end of the world. And I should have lived a coward forever, declared the lion. And no beast in all the forest would have had a good word to say about me. This is all true, said Dorothy, and I am glad I was of use to these good friends, but now that each of them has had what he most desired, and each is happy in having a kingdom to rule besides, I think I should like to go back to Kansas. The silver shoes, said the good witch, have wonderful powers, and one of the most curious thing about them is that they can carry you to any place in the world in three steps, and each step will be made in the wink of an eye. All you have to do is knock the heels together three times and command the shoes to carry you wherever you wish to go. If that's true, said the child joyfully, I will ask them to carry me back to Kansas at once. She threw her arms around the lion's neck and kissed him, patting his big head tenderly. Then she kissed the tin woodman, who was weeping in a way most dangerous to his joints. But she hugged the soft, stuffed body of the scarecrow in her arms instead of kissing his painted face, and she found she was crying herself at this sorrowful parting from her loving comrades. Glinda the Good stepped down from her ruby throne to give the little girl a goodbye kiss, and Dorothy thanked her for all the kindness she had shown to her and her friends. Dorothy now took Toto up solemnly in her arms, and having said one last goodbye, she clapped the heels of her shoe together three times, saying, Take me home to Aunt Em. The silver shoes took but three steps, and then, instantly, she was whirling through the air, so swiftly that all she could see or feel was the wind whistling past her ears. She stopped so suddenly that she rolled over upon the grass several times before she knew where she was. At length, however, she sat up and looked around her. Good gracious, she cried, for she was sitting in the broad Kansas prairie, and just before her was the new farmhouse Uncle Henry built after the cyclone had carried away the old one. 
Uncle Henry was milking the cows in the barnyard, and Toto had jumped out of her arms and was running towards the barn, barking furiously. Dorothy stood up and found she was in her stocking feet, for the sh silver shoes had fallen off in her flight through the air and were lost forever in the desert. Chapter 24 Home Again Aunt Em had just come out of the house to water the cabbages when she looked up and saw Dorothy running towards her. My darling child, she cried, folding the little girl in her arms and covering her face with kisses. Where in the world did you come from? From the land of Oz, said Dorothy gravely. And here is Toto, too. And, oh, Aunt Em, I am so glad to be back home again. And I want to end this. It's not from the book, but I want to end this with this. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, Skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Some day I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me, where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? If happy little blue birds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? And that's the end. I love that. Wow. Thank you so much. That was fun. That was The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, the original book by L. Frank Baum. Excuse me. That was a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed that. All right. Uh, coming up on Saturday's stream, we will begin a brand new book. And we're going to do Alice in Wonderland. So that'll be coming up. That'll be exciting. Thank you. Um, wherever you may be watching in, thank you for joining the stream. We're going to close out a little early tonight. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, Facebook, we are on the page. I'm not wearing pants. You can find us there on YouTube. You'll find us on Jay Sheldon's YouTube channel. We're live on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And of course, twitch.tv, Jay Sheldon, no pants, like subscribe, comment, share, uh, follow, whatever you uh, you choose click the right button and off you go they're all over the place because i'm on three different places at the same time <laughs> all right my friends thanks for staying with me and thanks for uh, listening in we'll, we'll see you again on saturday night we'll have lots more to talk about you want to be a part of the show you can do that too i am still trying to get my brother booked on the show which should be an absolute nightmare but we'll get him on uh, one of these days very soon, I hope. Um, that is going to do it for yet another uh, I'm Not Wearing Pants stream. And I will uh, see you again on Saturday night. In the meantime, I'm Jay Sheldon, and I'm not wearing pants. Good night. Yo.